Hello everyone. Hey guys. Um, thanks for joining us again. Um, I've lost track of what number this is in the series. Is it four? Five? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But thanks for being with us on this Monday evening. Um, we have a lesson for you today with Ben Power, who is a colleague of ours on the Broadway show Come From Away. Ben is also um, a longtime friend of mine. I met him right after getting to New York um, 13 years ago, which is insane. Whoa. Um, but he's also uh, a, fr a friend, a best friend of one of my best friends from like 20 years ago, which is a whole other story that we won't get into right now. But anyways, we're really excited to have Ben. He's going to be teaching um, a flute tune in a moment and probably some philosophy, I would guess. Um, but before we do that, um, I just want to remind everybody who's watching that this is part of the Tune Supply Learning Initiative. And um, the, uh, the pay that we give our teachers is from community contributions. So if you find this lesson uh, useful or valuable at the end, um, click down in the description, or you can do it now. Now it's fine. Sure. Whenever you want. Whenever. Um, down in the description, there is a link to the fund that we use to pay our teachers and also to book future teachers for, for everyone out there. Um, so we'd be grateful for that. And then the other thing I will just mention is tonight, we have the Mario's live virtual session at 8 p.m. Uh, on the same channel. And last announcement is our next teaching um, series uh, event is on Friday with James Yoshizawa, incredible percussionist from LA. And that's actually gonna be live on our Facebook page. It's the first time we're trying that. It won't be here on YouTube, it'll be over at Facebook. Um, I'll remind you of all of that at the end of Ben's lesson. But for now, I think we are just about ready. We are going to go over live to Ben Power right now. Live to Ben Power right now. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Um, uh, I, uh, I hope we're all doing uh, as swimmingly as we might be, um, as things are. Uh, Anyway, I'm here today to teach you a, uh, a tune with uh, uh, many thanks to Chris Ranney and, and, and Caitlin um, for setting this up and uh, also a shout out to my friend Jeff Kaiser who got me at least part of the way through the tech for this. Um, so uh, I thought I'd uh, try and teach a, a, a northern flute tune. Um, I like those tunes particularly because they give you an awful lot of room to... Uh, to play with them, really. Um, they tend to be uh, fairly melodically um, simple and, um, and they tend to repeat themselves but um, lead them, lend themselves to like good uh, variation and ornamentation and particularly rhythmic variation um, and they're, they're lots of fun to play, uh, especially on the flute. So um, the tune I've chosen, I was thinking about this earlier and um, uh, it's one of those things that tells you about repertoire and, and memory is that I couldn't, couldn't, for a minute, I couldn't think of any, um, flute tunes, northern tunes, northern flute tunes, just, just got nowhere. And, um, uh, I finally got one, um, which is the one I'm going to, I'm going to use. It's called the cocktail. Uh, and suddenly a million of them came, um, which I just, I suppose shows you how um, repertoire attaches to memory and how they come together. And uh, hopefully, um, if I do another one of these at some point, uh, I'll talk a bit more about that and how you can um, establish those, those those pockets of tunes, uh, really. Um, so the cocktail uh, is uh, one of um, a corpus of tunes that... Um, uh, is played by the uh, the Belfast um, musicians, uh, and they mostly got it from a man named uh, Eddie Duffy, who's sort of legendary up that direction. Played with uh, Mick Hoy, uh, in particular, um, a fiddler also legendary. And they were born in uh, well, Eddie anyway was born in the late eighteen hundreds and uh, played. Um, uh, Cayley Band uh, played in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, especially, and um, he died in 1986. And a lot of his tunes, which he got uh, in Fermanagh uh, and around that area, um, percolated up to to Belfast with him and were picked up by the Belfast flute players. 
So um, this tune, uh, the cocktail, I'll play it once, uh, once round or maybe twice. We'll see, and you can give a listen to it, um, and then uh, and then we'll we'll go into um, uh, to learning it. So here we go. Sorry, I've played that better, I think. Um, it's an interesting tune, I think, because one of the reasons I decided to stay with this and not go to one of the other ones that, I, that came along with it when I, when I remembered it was that um, it has this interest, although it's a simple tune, it has this interesting change. In the first half, it's this bright uh, D major-y thing that sort of uh, lends itself or hangs out in the, the upper octave a lot um, and begins there, right? Um, almost fanfare-ish and then in the second bit um it's uh it becomes uh, an a minor tune um it becomes uh you know so it changes both key and mode um there which is uh which is really nice and it, it, it kicks itself around yeah you, you tend to want to keep to, to go round it and round it because the the second darker uh darker side of it um kind of throws you back around into the uh, into the first part again so it's one of these ones we, you know we call roundy tunes really um uh the guys who who i got it from i got it from desi wilkinson um and uh and later on um uh uh Paul McGratton, um, Marcus O'Mercu, um, Cahill O'Connell recorded it subsequently, um, and uh, Hammy Hamilton uh, plays it, I think. These all would have been these northern, you know, Belfast flute players, um, you know, who were who were around that session scene, which was uh, really lively in the, uh, you know, latter 60s, uh, 70s, 70s and 80s in particular um i think and um although you know it was impacted by the troubles to to some extent um but uh if you look at you know if you go on the session.org right they have all this great information if you look up the tune there which of course i did um they give the list of all the recordings and um it's interesting who's recorded it because most of them are uh, especially most of the older recordings that you see on that list are these these northern uh, musicians and then laterally you get um uh, well, uh, in the middle you get Trian, right? That's uh, Liz Carroll and Billy McComiskey and, and Dahi Sproul recording it. And then, uh, f you know, laterally, uh, Laura Federson um, on her recording um, with her partner, whose name is currently escaping me. Forgive me, I beg your pardon. Um, Anyway, you can you can fish around, you can find those, and hear the way they play them. Um, but here we go. We'll have uh, we'll have a go at the first uh, the first wee wee bit here. Which actually is the full, whole repeated is the first half of the tune. First half of that bit is. Now, for me, when I'm learning a tune, um, it's definitely, you know, sort of helpful to um, have an absolute uh, version, maybe in, in, in some specific way for a minute or two. But I think it's really important to almost immediately or immediately start um, messing with it and varying it and looking for variation. Yeah. Um, so what I mean by that is what what makes our music interesting where it lives is how we manipulate the tunes the tunes are even the complex ones are simple by you know 
I don't know, world musical standards or whatever, right? So it's how we play them that makes them interesting and makes Irish music what it is. Um, if you play them straight, as I'm sure you know, uh, you're not really playing on traditional Irish music. What you're doing is you're playing an Irish tune. Um, so for me, I've got to get them shifting as fast as, as fast as I can because I don't want a path of least resistance on the tune to get worn into my head. That's what Martin Hayes called it, a path of least resistance through a tune where you begin to get stuck playing it the same way, right? So when I'm learning even a little bit like this, right, which might well be a way to play it, right? I, I almost immediately start thinking um, uh, where else um, you can get it, right? Where else you can take it. So... Right, you could play it that way, or or right. All of these are effectively, in terms of the structure of the tune and keeping it being that tune, the same thing. But all of them are slightly different. And when you're playing this way, you get this idea of cascading change through a tune, right? It's never the same twice, right? I like to build that in from the very first moment with very tiny phrases. Uh, and subsequently, your, your brain stops thinking of it that way. But that helps your brain learn uh, that thing, I think. Uh, and forgive me, for any more advanced students, you probably already know this, um, uh, so I usually like to at least, or no, I'd like to, I do more than this, but I, I, I recommend at least three ways round whatever bit you're practicing, no matter how small, even if it's like two notes, right? How can you play them? Or... Right, all of these ways, that no matter how small you break the bits of the tune in, you can find more than one way to do it. And eventually you can do things where you just play round and round and round like this. Etc. You, you're right, your brain just keeps throwing up um, options uh, without you having to think of it in a in a rigid way um, second bit uh, first bit again slowly and simply okay we move on and for some reason that was a bit I kept making mistakes in when I first played it there more right, and a few different ways work the original way or as close as I can come to it sorry yeah all right so together let's put those together Once, maybe slightly more slowly.
Okay, so that's the first half of the tune. As always, one of the reasons I love these tunes, right? They're not, they're not super demanding in what they're asking of you melodically, right? Um, so when you're playing this, right, um, and I suggest different ways to play it, there's lots of different things you can do, right, ornamentally. Um, but what the northern boys are sort of famous for is a kind of percussive style, especially the, fl the flute players, very, um, you know, it's almost flute as percussion instrument. So um, you can, there's lots of articulation, re-articulation, pulse, um, uh, rhythm. Um, they tend to ride uh, the, f the front edge of the beat. Um, so it's very uh, driving playing. Um, so um, how, do, how does that, how does it come off here, right? Um, you can stop tunes a lot, right? This is sort of like the 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 opposite of um, uh, the flowy version. The the Paddy Carty is the sort of archetypal exponent, I suppose. The, the East Galway flute player. Um, this one, it doesn't stop it in a turn because it, it becomes like a you know a choo choo train, really. Uh, you know, it pumps forward, right? But it's not. Um, at any given point, there are br constant breaks, or there can be, right? So... Right, that sort of thing, right? There's lots of um, stops in it. And so you, even in the middle of the phrase, right? So take those first two notes. Right, there's a big gap there. Ba right that you can think of in terms of how you articulate uh, a tune and these tunes in particular um, uh, they'll do a lot of the run-ins to it so right um, lots of things like that um, they use uh, in the north quite a lot of short rolls instead of long rolls. So instead of... You might get... Right, that was D short roll on the F, D short roll on the F, D long roll, de -de 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 -de. right, so... Right, something like that. And the short rolls are really they 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 don't take as much room obviously, right? And but they have this really brat that brat that sound to them that I think is is very useful for this style of playing. Um, another thing uh, that happens with a good few of those flute players is uh, their understanding of low low D high D is I think, uh, I want to say it's different than um, many flute players, right? Um, a good many of us have spend a lot of time making sure that our low D is clear and a clearly low D and our high D is clear and clearly a high D. Um, but um, Hammy Hamilton was once saying to me, he said, you, you remember that last recording of uh, Conal Agrada, which was his second one at the time, he said, there's not a single low D on that recording. And in one respect, he, he sort of, he's sort of, right, right. Um, we're a, a, an instrument that plays by overtones, right? So um, you can think instead of low D being one thing, high D being another thing, that a high D is just a low D with lots more overtones uh, in it. So we traditionally learn to play that high D um, with our index finger up to get a clean tone, right? Right, but um, Mike Rafferty said uh, he never did that, you know, he liked the timbre of the note with the finger down. And you can hear the, the timbre changing and then popping from the lower version up into the higher version. So um, landing on those and using those different timbres in your, in your tune are 
uh, really useful and it's the northern boys do it a lot so right um all right they also do that jump octaves right um this is an advantage of the flute over a lot of the other instruments uh we don't have to change physical place to move octaves right fiddle you have to move to a different string and etc um box you have to move up and down the keyboard we're still in this one place and it just takes a tiny instant movement of the lip to jump octaves so you'll hear if you go listen to those recordings of of desi um it's on the three-piece flute it's called that recording that this is on um you'll hear him move from octave uh, up and down um almost in a in, in a really liquid fashion um uh and it's something that also is worth thinking about in terms of variation in your playing um second part of the tune we better move on to one two Second part. Once more. The first part again. Sorry, fair warning. Both parts together. One, two. So then what happens is that first segment gets played again. That's the... And then it jumps to the high octave for this rundown that brings you back into the, the bright major mode. here dee -dee. leads you straight back into the tune again so um that full uh part again not the full b but the repeated b that leads into the rundown one two So the whole second part, nice and slow. Here we go. One, two. It's called the cocktail. Yeah. 
uh, probably originally from uh, Eddie Duffy. Um, that is to say, I don't know that he wrote it, but it came through him in the north. So, um, play the whole tune uh, nice and slowly the first time, yeah? One, two... talk for just a second about uh, time and space right um, sounds very cosmic but in this case there's an interesting thing you can do with tunes right if you play them very sparsely with a lot of holes like holes that flute players initially think are there to breathe in right but especially in the north become a stylistic thing right so Right, a lot of holes there. And when you play it slowly like that, it sounds a bit sparse, right? But when you play it quick, um, not so much, right? Um... Now, if you play it sparse once, and then when it repeats, you play everything that fits in there, you'll hear the tune draw back and then leap forward it's like um having the the horse tight on back on the lead and then suddenly you let him go and off he goes right so uh let's see if i can make it sound right for you that effect so i see that we're almost out of time but i wanted to give you uh, a couple of the other tunes that popped into my head uh, really quickly because uh, if you want to play a set of northern flute tunes um uh yeah i mean like why wouldn't you right so um the 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 sort of three other ones that i was really considering to to play for this that because they popped into my head um are uh patsy hanley's um, which is, uh, you know, the famous uh, Ross Common flute player. The 
piper on horseback. Uh, I got this from Desi as well. And uh, finally, this great tune uh, called Bonnie Anne. Uh, I don't know if it's just Bonnie Anne, you know, like a pretty Anne, right? Or if it actually has some reference to uh, Anne Bonnie, the famous pirate. Um, I, I like to think about it being Anne about Anne Bonnie, the famous pirate. But it's an interesting tune because although most of the time it has C naturals, at the beginning of the second part, it has this really featured C sharp. Um, but here you go. I, this was... The tune that I almost uh, taught instead of instead of um, the cocktail. <laughs> So there you are, um, a northern flute tune and uh, some other northern flute tunes to, to maybe go along with it. Um, I hope that was uh, um, helpful. I uh, hope you enjoyed it a bit. Um, thanks very much for uh, for tuning in. Uh, thanks again to uh, ST and Rani, uh, Chris and Caitlin of Tune Supply. And um, that's a lot. Cheers. Thanks, Ben. Awesome. <laughs> you know, um, for the last how many? Four years, Ben and us have all been on the same show together, and we see each other like, you know, eight times a week, if not more. And then we haven't seen Ben now for, for months, which is very weird. Yeah. But so it's really good to see him um, on camera today, being his old self. I miss you, Ben. Um, okay, so a couple things just to wrap up here. Um, if you uh, found the lesson useful and, and you're able to throw a few bucks into the fund that allows us to pay our teachers, that would be great. The link is in the comments and also in the description. And if you go over to the Tune Supply, oh, it's there too. Oh, it's wow. right there on the screen. That's great. If you go over to the Tune Supply page, you can also see our upcoming um, schedule for teachers. And we're adding to that every day. Just uh, I was talking to some people today about getting on the schedule. Very exciting. And um, if you haven't had enough tunes today, I mentioned that the Mario's virtual session is going to happen at 8 p.m. tonight on this same channel. So uh, go practice your tune for an hour and a half and then, and then come back over. And uh, what else? Oh, we're doing a huge Mother's Day concert on Sunday with, with 50 musicians. I think it's up to 50 now because a bunch of people asked to join. So, okay. um, which will be at this, at this channel as well. Um, 50 musicians from four countries all around the world playing trad and all sorts of other things so check that out on our website um and i think that's it yeah so thanks for joining us and hopefully we'll see some of you on friday for james yoshizawa's uh course which will be over on the facebook page on the facebook sorry i can't speak the tune supply, tune supply facebook. facebook page and that's my oven saying that i'm ready to cook my dinner so we're gonna sign off for now thanks again for joining us yeah, see we're, you gonna, soon. we're gonna oh. leave you with this very handsome photo oh, of ben yes. power everyone take care